Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 46. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 19th of December 2012 with a particularly large stack of books this week because of an especially heavy production week for Marvel. We have a bit to cover. However, before we get to the first five, I wanted to share the nerdy nominations for the comic book related entries for our forthcoming League of Nerds Nerdies Awards podcast. Be sure to visit our Facebook page at theleagueofnerds.com to cast your votes in these and many other nerdy categories. Also, some categories have picked up some additional write-in nominations, so let us know if your favorite's not on the list. I'll read the nominees in each category alphabetically. You can check the polls at theleagueofnerds.com to see their current rankings. Alright, that said, the nerdy nominations for Best Ongoing Comic Book Series are Batman, Daredevil, Morning Glories, Peter Panzerfaust, Saga, The Walking Dead, Wolverine and the X-Men, and X-Factor. Now, to clarify, this is for the current run on these series. So, for example, we're referring to Mark Wade's recent Daredevil issues and not accounting for historic contributions like Frank Miller, Kevin Smith, or Brian Michael Bendis. Also, we're talking about the comic books only. So don't vote for The Walking Dead because you love the TV series or vote for Batman because you love The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, for the next category, the nerdy nominations for Best Comic Book Event of 2012 are Avengers vs. X-Men, Before Watchmen, Daredevil, End of Days, Death of the Family, Marvel Now, Night of the Owls, and Punk Rock Jesus. Finally, the nerdy nominations for Best Single Comic Book Issue of 2012 are All New X-Men Number 1, Amazing Spider-Man Number 698, Batman Number 10, Batman Number 14, Invincible Number 97, and The Walking Dead number 100. Now once again, to vote in these polls, visit our Facebook page at theleagueofnerds.com and be sure to like us while you're there. Alright, moving on to the new comics this week, we'll take a quicker than usual look at my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, starting with at number one, X-Factor number 249 by Peter David. Uh, X-Factor investigates a series of eerie portents that leads them to a mysterious, previously unknown race of beings known as the Warders. Their job, to prepare the world for its end. Now, I've mentioned in previous podcasts that X-Factor is building towards the Hell on Earth storyline that Peter David's been brewing for years, uh, kicking off in issue number 250. And number two this week, we've got All New X-Men number four by Brian Michael Bendis, part of the Marvel Now initiative. The original five X-Men come face-to-face with their counterparts, and it isn't a peaceful meeting. At number three this week, we've got Saga number eight by Brian K. Vaughn. Former soldier and new mama Lana has already survived lethal assassins, rampaging armies, and alien monstrosities, but now she faces her greatest challenge yet, the in-laws. At number four, we've got Nightwing number 15 by Kyle Higgins. This is a death of the family tie-in. The Joker strikes Haley's circus, and Nightwing can't stop a devastating murder. And finally, at number five, we've got Wolverine and the X-Men number 22 by Jason Aaron. Frankenstein's murder circus is in town, and he's brainwashed the X-Men. Do the students stand a chance against their teachers? Rounding out the top ten at number six, we've got Avengers number two, the greatest heroes in comics together on one unbeatable team. Now shipping twice a month, the Avengers go large, expanding their roster and the sphere of influence to a global and even interplanetary level. When Captain America puts out his call, who will answer? Big threats, big ideas, big idealism. These are the Avengers now. At number 7, we've got Thief of Thieves number 11 from Robert Kirkman. The lines are drawn between the cartel and Augustus' group in the race to save Emma. The only problem is that things could get a little grisly before either party is ready to strike. At number 8, we've got Red Hood and the Outlaws number 15, another death of the family tie-in. Red Hood and Red Robin team up against the Joker, Teen Titans versus the Outlaws. At number 9, we've got Harbinger number 7. Charlene Dupree feels like she's been on fire since the day she was born. Too hot to handle, abused and misused, she's turned to a dead-end life on the sleazy side of the New Orleans streets. But when Peter and a strange band of teenagers with wondrous powers walk into the strip club where she works, Charlene discovers the heat that's been burning her up inside is the only thing that can set her free. Meanwhile, Project Rising Spirit closes in on Peter Stanchek, the most dangerous boy in the world. Vengeance, acceptance, and fire meet the next member of the Harbinger Resistance as Renegades begins a brand new chapter. At number 10, we've got Exo Man of War number 8. Exo Man of War and Ninjak unearth the Vine's ultimate endgame. Deep within the halls of MI6, a sinister plot by the Vine's alien agents is about to come to fruition. Their goal? 
wipe humanity off the map, beginning with Exo Manowar. To get the job done, the Vine has enlisted Ninjak, the world's most lethal assassin, but by doing so, they may have sealed their own fate. What began as a war between two men must become an uneasy truce, or Earth will fall. Betrayal, death, and a changing of the guard await in this explosive conclusion to the smash hit arc establishing Exo Manowar in the Valiant Universe. For the best of the rest, this week from DC, we've got Before Watchmen Moloch number 2. This concludes the two-part limited series. Ever wonder what made criminal mastermind Moloch turn over a new leaf? Moloch's origins are revealed in this odd coming-of-age tale. We've got Birds of Prey number 15. It's shake-up time as the team loses one member and gains a new one. Meanwhile, something strange is happening to Black Canary, and Starling's not sure what to do about it. Is this a hint of darker things to come? We've got Catwoman number 15. Following her standoff against the Joker, Catwoman takes an easy job, stealing Eclipso's black diamond from the black room. The diamond's power rises with the full moon, like on the night Catwoman sets out to take it. And here's one for Brandon. We've got Django Unchained number 1 of 6. The Oscar-winning writer-director Quentin Tarantino's latest epic film script is adapted for comics, the blood-soaked tale of a bounty hunter dentist and his partner, a recently freed slave in the post-Civil War South. This is an adaptation of the full screenplay, including scenes that may not make it into the final theatrical cut. We've got Supergirl number 15, the Hell on Earth crossover event continues. Now the solicit for this book says, The moment is finally here, Superboy and Superman face-to-face. With Superboy dying from the wounds Hell inflicted on him, they may not have time for the heart-to-heart. Now that sounds a lot like the uh, description of the Superboy book last week, and the description for Superboy last week, I think, was meant for Supergirl. It said, Hell takes Supergirl on a whirlwind tour of Earth and even space, all in an attempt to sway her to the cause. On the surface of the sun, Supergirl must make a choice, Earth or Hell. And last from DC, we've got Wonder Woman number 15. Who is Orion and what are the new gods? Massive changes are coming for Wonder Woman and the entire DC universe. Get ready for round one of Wonder Woman vs. Orion. From Marvel this week, we've got A plus X number 3. Jason Aaron and Pasquale Ferry bring you the team up of two of the biggest Marvel heroes, Storm and Black Panther. James Asmus and Billy Tan bring together the stars of the two biggest new Marvel series, Gambit and Hawkeye. We've got Astonishing X-Men number 57. Warbird takes Manhattan. What secret is she hiding and will it endanger the team? We've got Avengers Arena number 2, Annihilation's Cami versus Death Locket. Avengers Academy's Hazmat versus Death Locket. Who the heck is Death Locket? And who dies in this issue? Plus, who are the students of the Braddock Academy? We've got Cable and X-Force number 2. With the same solicit as last week, Cable is back now. With the new X-Force at his side, he must tackle the threats that nobody else can know about. But just who are Cable's new recruits, and why is his team public enemy number 1? Caught red-handed at the scene of a terrorist attack on a major American corporation whose CEO has expressed anti-mutant views, the X-Force is on the run with none other than the uncanny Avengers in hot pursuit. We've got Captain America number 2. Dimension Z continues. Remember their faces, their families. Remember what they love. Learn how to turn it against them. Armin Zola's ambitions leave Captain America stranded in the upside-down territory known as Dimension Z. Steve has saved the life of Zola's son, but can he keep him alive? Who are the barbarians of Frox, and what are their intentions for Steve and his new ward? We've got Captain Marvel number 8, Deep Sea Danger. What lurks below the ocean's surface, and can Captain Marvel stop it before she gets shipwrecked? Guest starring Monica Rambeau. Got Daredevil 21, the final showdown with Coyote. Big clues to a mystery building since issue 3, Daredevil wanted by the NYPD. Got FF number 2, Ant-Man, She-Hulk, Medusa, and Miss Thing. How does the rest of the Future Foundation react to the new team? What classic Fantastic Four supervillain can't wait to get their hands on the new FF? Got Gambit number 7, Gambit's on the Lamb is an enemy of the British Empire, hunted by Pete Wisdom and MI-13. And to make matters worse, the criminal mastermind keeping Gambit on a leash now wants him dead. Can Gambit play the two sides against each other to save his own skin? We've got Hawkeye number 6, the ace archer Clint Barton faces DVR Mageddon. We've got Indestructible Hulk number 2, guest starring Iron Man. While Bruce Banner and Tony Stark are friends, Hulk and Iron Man are anything but. Eisner award-winning writer Mark Wade and superstar artist Lionel Yu continue to take the Hulk in an all-new direction. We've got Scarlet Spider number 12.1. Kane's investigation brings him face to face with the hand and bruiser. What does Kingpin want with Houston? Chris Yost and Paolo Sequera will bring you the answers as a brand new year of Scarlet action awaits. We got Secret Avengers number 35. Contagious robotic evolution is go, and the remaining Secret Avengers are the only ones left. But how do you stop a plague that has already begun to spread? Torch, Venom, and Valkyrie infiltrate the rebel robot base in the core, but are Lord Ultravision and Monarch Machine Man friend or foe? Torch must choose between mankind and the perfect future Father will create for all of automatons. 
We've got Thor, God of Thunder, number three. Following the bloody wake of the murdered gods across the depths of space, Thor tracks the god Butcher into the present. Discovering a forgotten cave on Earth that echoes with the cries of tortured gods, the Thunder God is shocked to find himself among them. We've got Thunderbolts, number two, with the same solicit as the first book. Red Hulk, Venom, Elektra, Deadpool, and Punisher. Forget the courts, the jails, the system. This team of Thunderbolts fights fire with fire, targeting the most dangerous and lethal players in the Marvel Universe with extreme prejudice. Led by General Thunderbolt Ross, a.k.a. the Red Hulk, this hand-picked team of like-minded operatives is going to make the world a better place by all means necessary. We've got Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number 18. The world is at war and Miles Morales is miles from home. Miles has joined the Ultimates, but the decision may have cost him his family. Our young superhero has to make some big decisions, and he has to make them now. Guest starring the Ultimates. We've got Ultimate Comics The Ultimates number 19. After United We Stand, Americans' reconstruction begins. Can the United States ever be truly reunited? President Cap comes face-to-face with a painful reality. And the debut of Iron Patriot. We've got X-Men Legacy number 3. Legion must keep his inner demons in check long enough to help newly manifested mutant twins who are being exploited by a criminal cartel in Japan, but the twins may just have plans of their own, as do Legion's inner demons. We've got Extreme X-Men number 8, Meet the Extreme X-Force. Dazzler is confronted with who she might turn into if she never gets home. From IDW this week, we've got Star Trek The Next Generation Doctor Who Assimilation Squared number 8. The epic crossover between the two greatest science fiction properties of all time ends here. Our heroes launch a desperate mission behind the enemy lines in hopes of ending the cyberborg threat, but there's a traitor in their midst. From Image Comics, we've got America's Got Powers number 4. As the televised games continue and Tommy tries to tap his enormous power, the government begins shutting things down. Their plan to use the kids as human batteries is close to realization. Will the renegade teens known as the Rejected stop it or make matters far, far worse? Out in trades this week, we've got Incredible Hulk by Jason Aaron, Volume 2 hardcover. It's the strangest, smashingest Hulk yet. The Green Goliath discovers that to remain himself and prevent the diabolical Dr. Banner from reemerging, he must stay angry. The Hulk picks fights against drug cartels, sea monsters, Russian super soldiers, and a lost city of Sasquatches. Oh, and the Punisher, Kraven the Hunter, Wolverine, and the Thing. But when Banner's devious master plan is revealed and Dr. Doom returns, it's a monumental day of reckoning for both Hulk and Banner. Hulk wants a piece of Doom. Banner plays an endgame of his own, and it all leads to an explosive conclusion. Collecting Incredible Hulk numbers 7.1 and 8 through 15. And finally, we've got Walking Dead Omnibus Volume 4 hardcover, signed and numbered edition. This deluxe hardcover features 24 issues of the hit series The Walking Dead, along with the covers for the issues all in one massive oversized slip case volume, perfect for longtime fans, new readers, and anyone needing a heavy object with which to fend off The Walking Dead. This book collects The Walking Dead number 73 to 96. All right, that's quite a few books out this week, and there are yet even more books available at your local comic book shop, so be sure to check them out and see what else you might be interested in. You can let me know if there's a book that I'm overlooking on my Facebook page at he's got issues.com where I track the books I read as I read them. And don't forget to vote for the League of Nerds Nerdiest Awards at theleagueofnerds.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and the League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney saying Merry Christmas, and I've got issues.